Number 157. The data table shows the height of nine students in a small algebra class. What is the mean height of the students in this class? In order to calculate the mean, all we need to do is take the sum of all the numbers and divide it by the data points that we have. So let's add up these nine values. Sixty one plus fifty eight plus fifty three plus forty nine plus fifty seven plus sixty four plus fifty one plus fifty four plus fifty seven. The total sum is five oh four. And we have nine students, so n is nine. Five oh four divided by nine is fifty six. So this is the average height or the mean height of all the students in his class? B is the answer. Number 158. The frequency table below shows the ages of high school students who are enrolled in a math club. Which of the following statistical values is the highest? Would you say it's A, the mean, B, the median, C, the mode, or would you say it's the range or the first quartile? Let's calculate each value. Let's start with the first one, the mean. So we said that the mean is equal to the sum divided by the number of items in our list. Now what we have is a frequency table. In order to calculate the mean of a frequency table, you need to take the sum of the numbers. We have two students who are 14 years old. So the sum of their ages is 14 plus 14, or simply 14 times 2. There's four students who are 15 years old. So the sum of their ages will be 15 times 4. And then just follow the pattern. Next is 16 times 5, and then 17 times 3, plus 18 times 2, plus 19 times 1. Now, we need to divide it by the total number of students in this club, which is the sum of the frequency column. So we have 2 plus 4, which is 6, plus 5, that's 11, then 14, 16, 17. So there's a total of 17 students in this club. Go ahead and type this in your calculator. So you should get, for the mean, 16.118. Now, let's do the same for part B. Let's calculate the median of this group frequency table. So how can we do this? The best thing we could do right now is write out the numbers. So we have two 14s, four, 15s. You want to write this in increase in order. And then we have five numbers with a value of 16, three 17s, two 18s, 119. The median is basically the middle number. So we're going to eliminate numbers on the left side and on the right side until we find what number is in the middle. So we can see that the median is 16 in this example. Now what about the mode? The mode is the number that occurs most frequently. The number with the highest frequency is 16, so that's the mode. The range is the difference between the highest number and the lowest number. The highest number is 19, the lowest number is 14. So the range is going to be 19 minus 14, which is 5. Now what about the first quartile? The median represents the second quartile. To find the first quartile, you need to find the median of the lower half of the data. So what is the median of those first eight numbers?
the median is going to be 15. So 15 is the value of the first quartile. So the answer for this problem is answer choice A. The mean is the highest statistical value based on this frequency table. Number 159. There are 4,500 students attending Lakeshore High School. 250 students were selected at random to participate in the school survey. 72% of those students who were selected indicated that they intend to go to college after high school. Based on these results, how many students in Lakeshore High School are not planning on going to college? Let's write down what we know. 72% of students who participated in the survey say that they want to go to college. That means that the other 28% are not planning on going to college. 100 minus 72 is 28. So in order to answer this question, in order to determine the number of students in the entire Lakeshore High School who are not going to college, we simply need to find 28% of that number. So what is 28% of 4,500? All we need to do is take the decimal equivalent of 28%, which is 0.28. Just take 28% divided by 100, and then take that number, 0.28, multiply it by 4,500. You should get 1260. So that's the number of students who are not planning on going to college based on the data that we received from this survey. Number 160, the test scores of five students in two different classes were selected at random. The test scores in class A were 89, I mean 88, 88, 89, 89, and 90. The test scores in class B were 78, 85, 90, 97, and 100. Which of the following statements is true? So let's look at answer choice A. The test scores in class A has a higher standard deviation than those in class B. Is that true or false? Or is it the other way around? The test scores in class A, does it have a, a lower standard deviation than those in class B? Or are the standard deviations the same for the two groups? Well, let's write out the data in such a way that will help us to answer the question. The standard deviation tells us how far the data set values are from the mean. In class A, we have the scores 88, 89, 90, 89, and 88. If you average these five numbers, you'll find that the mean is 90. It's the number right in the middle. Class B have the scores 78, 85, 90, 97, and 100. If you add up those five values and divide them by five, you'll find that the mean is also 90. Now let's give consideration to how the numbers are arranged and how they relate to the mean. So looking at these two classes, which one has a higher standard deviation with respect to their test scores? Is it class A or is it class B? Now keep in mind the standard deviation tells us how far the data values are from the mean. So which class has data values that are very close to the mean? That's class A. All the test scores are very close to 90, which is the mean. So therefore, class A is going to have the lower standard deviation. 
Class B, on the other hand, has test scores that are very far from the mean. Therefore, it's going to have a higher standard deviation. So the correct answer for this problem is going to be answer choice B. The test scores in class A has a lower standard deviation than those in class B. Now for those of you who would like to verify this, here's the formula that will help you to calculate the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the square differences between all of the data values and the mean divided by n minus 1. So you could use that formula to see which group has the higher standard deviation.